Shalom. Baruch Abba, Corim Lee Anthony. Hello and welcome. They call me Anthony. Thank you so much for joining us here at Sarid for our weekly Torah teaching on the coming of Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach, according to the word of Yahuwah. We praise Yahuwah Elohim for the great wisdom and insight he has given us in his word to share with you. It is truly a masterpiece and he has left no stone uncovered so that we lack nothing in the judgment. Hallel Yahuwah. To the Kodeshim out there, I um, want to thank you so much for your comments and for your support. It is not gone overlooked and truly appreciated. If you are joining us here for the first time, Baruch Abba, um, welcome. There are orientation videos, orientation one and orientation two that will help you in your understanding of how we look at scripture here. And of course, all of the videos are loaded with a wealth of information that Yahuwah wants his people to know so that we lack nothing in the judgment. Well, now that we are assembled, um, let's go on a little excursion with the believers as Yahushua puts the plan into motion now. Yahushua chapter 2, we'll be looking at verses 1 and 2 this week. Followed by the witness over in 1st Yochanan, we'll be looking at chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Now Yahushua ben Nun sent out two men from Shittim to spy secretly. In this the love of Yahuwah was manifested toward us, that Yahuwah has sent his only brought forth Ben into the world. Now Yahushua ben Nun sent out two men from Shittim to spy secretly. So here we go. As we pick up from the last teaching, everyone is on the same page and we all understand the battle. And with their commitment to follow the command of Yahushua HaMashiach, clearly stated by the believers in the previous lines of survey, it leaves no doubt about what our attitude should be following Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach here for the Edut as well. Every soul on deck for the second coming, for the next phase of the redemptive plan. We are to have a warlike attitude to overcome the anti-Mashiach setup in the world that is specifically noticed in the speaking. They speak as the world. And all the world has come to an agreement about who is to be worshipped, and what we are supposed to call him. And it is not Yahuwah Elohim, nor Yahushua HaMashiach. And this is a problem, spiritually. Yahuwah separates himself by name. Now to survey the line, Yochanan uses the analogy of Yahuwah's love toward us to show a whole new perspective in this part of the survey in the book of Yahushua as it relates to the big picture of big picture of salvation, to show what is to be spied out and why. We see that Yahushua ben Nun sent out two men from Shittim to spy secretly before they came for judgment. In this, the love of Yahuwah was manifested toward us, that Yahuwah has sent his only brought forth Ben into the world. So we notice in both instances, someone is sent. And we know from the, the story, war and judgment are to follow. So let's look a little closer at this analogy in the written words of both accounts to hear the message from Yahuwah. Okay, now Yahushua ben Nun sent out two men from Shittim to spy secretly. All this is being set up for the building of Yahushua's posterity, his offspring. He is fishing for his people. To find this, uh, you'll find this in the meaning of ben Nun. Yochanan tells us in, in the survey line, in this, in this, the love of Yahuwah was manifested toward us. So let's look into this. We notice in this setup, there is spying. Spies are key to important victories behind enemy lines. And Yahushua ben Nun sent out two men to do that secretly. In the same way, Yahushua HaMashiach, the only brought forth Ben of Yahuwah, was sent into the world to perform a very important mission for the plan of redemption. 
he was sent as a spy to discern the heart and mind of believers in him for salvation. He came in the flesh to build on something very specific for his posterity, the meaning of Benu, his increase. What he came to do will be used to spy on the hearts and minds of everyone who hears of this very specific event. This event is set up to be done publicly and will then be used to judge the hearts of the people. The heart is the secret place that is being spied on, spied secretly, to see who believed. Whoever repented and believed would be saved. This is the love of Yahuwah toward us. He wants to save everybody, and Yahushua was brought forth to set up a way to spy on the heart in order to get that done to see who would believe and who would not, who wants to be saved by Yahuwah and who does not. It is secret because belief, as I have mentioned, is in the heart, and we all have an individual choice to make about how we are going to conduct ourselves in the light of his sacrifice here in the flesh. Yahuwah does not force anyone to believe or not to believe. Judgment is coming regardless. We know this from the story in the book of Yahushua, and this love that Yahuwah has made manifest is seen as a way of escape for all the generations concerning this event. As the big picture is now being laid out in the book of Yochanan, he sees this too, and is writing about it to warn us here for the edut about this part of the big picture of the redemptive plan called spying on the heart. Things done in the secret places. Motives that govern our lives. Is he a part of your planning? Are you planning your life around him? Or are you constantly asking him for things that serve no purpose for his agenda? To plan his life around yours. Yahushua ben Nun sent two men. Yahushua himself is also the second man, as we look into this part, because he himself is coming back to judge the event that he is being brought forth to set up down in Yochanan. He is being brought forth to do that, manifested. The word for manifested, G5319, means to make actual and visible, realized to make known by teaching, to be plainly recognized and thoroughly understood. And this is what is understood. This story of Yahushua's first coming is thoroughly understood by the religions of today. In every way it has been manifested to the world, and the world has twisted it, of course. Okay? The world has changed the true identity of this account. As for the two men, Shanaim is two. The verb Shana means to repeat, to do again, to disguise oneself. How about that? As I, as I have mentioned, he is also the second man, only he is coming at a later date, closer to our time. He will be sent then as well brought forth, if you will, wants to set it up, wants to judge it. Has to be this way so that the survey on the line can be made manifest here for the edut. Notice it reads, Yahuwah sent his only brought forth Ben into the world. One person, two distinct missions. The same two men sent to, to spy in the story are the same two brought forth to judge Rahab and her family in the story. Okay? So now as we continue uh, in this, in this plan for salvation that Yahuwah uh, has set up for Yahushua, been known to prosper in, uh, as Yahushua, been known actually and visibly sent men to spy secretly, Yahuwah has actually and visibly sent his only brought forth Ben into the world for this written account. 
to show authenticity in his word. Notice Yahushua ben Nun in the line above. Okay, he is being brought forth into the world as Yahuwah's only been. You see it in the survey line, from the top line down to the line below. Brought forth in the written account. This is marvelous. Now also in this, Yahushua also came to die for our sins. You find this? This was a, a secret part of the redemptive plan. And this way, he was also brought forth. And this is why the men were from Shittim. So let's look into this footnote, because I have a few things to say about um, this debacle. Reads Hebrew Shittim. Okay. Okay, so the word for Acacia Grove in the Abrit is H7851. This is Shittim. And it means the acacias. These are trees. The root is H7848. Shata. This is identifying the wood of the tree. Okay. It then goes on to narrow it down to uh, as the sticks of wood from this tree. It has the same root as 7850. Shotat, meaning to scorch. How about that? It is the act part of an other, otherwise unused root, meaning to pierce. Mm -hmm. This is identifying the type of tree that Yahushua was staked on. Acacia. And the things that happened before and after the sword came and took his life. He was scourged and pierced. Shittim is representing why Yahushua was brought forth down in Yohanan, as it reads that Yahuwah has sent his only brought forth Ben into the world. In this, the love of Yahuwah was manifested toward us. This manifested itself, it visibly occurred to see who would believe for salvation, as I mentioned, and who would not. This is called spying secretly, being sent to spy out the land. He was scourged and pierced. We saw this piercing play out on the stake. The word bore witness to this truth. Remember, the crucifixion did not kill Yahushua. It just appeared that way. The flaming sword took his life the one from the garden put there by Yahuwah to guard the way to everlasting life. The soul of the man it took would be the soul of the one chosen to lead us back from the fall that occurred in the garden. Okay, this is all a part of the plan and it is a masterpiece. Remember. Okay. So let's give an accurate account because the crucifixion is designed for a slow and torturous encounter. There was nothing quick about dying that way. Yahushua was already dead by the time they got to him. This is the reason they marveled that he was already dead. So they pierced him just to make sure. Yahuwah worked it out perfectly at the time appointed. He himself was going to pass through and execute that judgment at that appointed time, according to the written word. As it is written, I will pass through. Now, it does not say who authored the attempted correction of the name of this place from Acacia Grove to Shatim. They left out the Y in the spelling. Shatim is spelled with the Yod. But what is even more disturbing is for the Christian doctrine to recognize the name of this place and spell it to reflect every Ibrit letter except the Yod, but fail to recognize and spell the name 
of Yahushua ben Nun in the same line. Right there and missed it. This is on par with the Christians over at the NU. Those Christians with no understanding. Mm -hmm. They didn't sign off on it. And if they didn't do it, they know who did it. So they're in on it. They recognize the proper name of that place, but fail to recognize the proper name of Yahushua, who's the most important name in this story. And they totally missed it. Couldn't even see this up close. Or perhaps this was done on purpose because they really despise the truth of this account. Either way, this also shows the blurriness in their understanding for everlasting life. They wrote Joshua here instead and wound up with Jesus for all the marbles in the long run. Got a lot of people deceived too. This is an anti-Mashiach setup. This is the type of blurry judgment by religious leaders that can cause others not to see the truth as well. They are spiritually farsighted, if you will. And let me tell you who follows this type of misguided spiritual understanding. Billions of people around the world. Sad thing. Specifically, every Christian, Jew, and Muslim. Okay? All of them. Because they have all... They all have Yahushua in their doctrine, although none of them recognize him properly. Many false prophets are in the world. That is why a second coming is necessary to establish the will of Yahuwah here on earth as it is in the Shemaim. His will currently is not being done here on the earth, and this is evident in the speaking of worship practices around the world. The second coming will again establish his righteousness on the world stage. Saying, go, view the land that we might live through him. Go view the Alephtar land, spy out the land, go view it. Yahushua is making moves to ensure their victory of the land in the story. However, Yochanan sees Yahushua HaMashiach's being brought forth by Yahuwah as a way that we might live through him in the land everlasting that is being prepared. Mark of the accusative is on the land. This is both the land in the story and it symbolizes the land everlasting gained after crossing over the Yarden, symbolic of crossing over um, the other side of life through death. Yochanan is highlighting the spiritual land on the other side of death. Once the life of the flesh is no more, that we might live through him. This hymn is Yahushua, the one speaking in the book of Yochanan, sending them to scope out the way to this Alephtar land. Go scope out the things necessary. The word for view, Ra'ah, H7200, 70, is used of the senses. It means to look intently, to see regarding something in order to learn, to learn about it by observation, to inspect and give attention to anything and discern what is seen. So this is spiritual. This viewing is concerning the senses. It is the senses that let you know this is something more than just a physical battle going on here. Yochanan addresses the spiritual aspect of Yahushua's death as it relates to our victory for everlasting life. This is another preview that is being given in the story. Especially Yericho. So they went. And this is love. Not that we love Yahuwah, but that he loved us. Okay. Yericho, H3405, means its moon. The root words associated with this word identifies a calendar month. The mark of the accusative is also here 
on Jericho. This one. This is something special because in this is love. The Aleftar moon leads us to the appointed times of Yahuwah. They let us or they lead us to the appointed time he wants us to worship him and his people always gather at that time to honor him, regardless of what's going on. This particular moon is the Aleftar moon. So this is the Ibrit moon, the calendar month. Okay? This is a special time of the month. Yericho, it's moon. Yochanan says, and this is love. So they once again are being led by the moon. Only this was not to worship Yahuwah. So Yochanan says, not that we loved Yahuwah. What is to be noticed here is they are not being led to worship Yahuwah. That would be showing love to Yahuwah. They are being led for war. So Yochanan records not that we loved Yahuwah, but that he loved us. He wanted them to be led by their moon. This is Yahuwah's way to ensure their success. Follow the moon. So Yericho is commanded by Yahushua, especially Yericho. This is uh, very important. Yahushua records, so they win. So if you want to ensure spiritual victory over the dark forces of evil, the moon lights the way through those dark times. And came to the house of a harlot named Rechab. And sent his Ben to be the propitiation for our sins. So right off the bat, they run into sinners. Dark times. The house of a harlot. H2180 is Zana. This is a place where fornication, adul uh, adultery, and harlotry goes on. Both sexually and spiritually. This is spiritual harlotry taking place, and there is something we need to learn. This is a place where people are unfaithful and forced into prostitution. And they were wide open, nonstop, just like it is today. And they were led by Rahab, whose name means wide. H7343 means wide. The verb means to grow wide, broad and roomy, wide open. So a lot of sin is going on here. Wide is the gate and broad is the way. Harlotry unleashed. They're wide open. Now, Yahushua sent them to Yericho, but they went to this place on their own to get some light into this place where people sell their soul. Okay, people sell their soul. Get some information there. Why else are you going to go? Uh, where else are you going to go to get dirt on people? Find out what is really going on in town. Okay. Nevertheless, Yahuwah sent his Ben to be the propitiation for our sins. To propitiate means to win or regain the favor of a mighty one, a spirit, or person by doing something that pleases them, appeasing. And this they will do because they have been sent by Yahushua to spy. And because he sent them, this is symbolic of something every soul has to go through, pass through this dark place in order to see the light everlasting or gain victory over spiritual harlotry. This house of great harlotry that they're wide open in, Yahuwah is watching over them to see what they do in the face of strong temptation. In this case, Yochanan says Yahushua was sent to appease 
Yahuwah Elohim, so that we gain favor. And lodge there. Beloved, if Yahuwah so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen Yahuwah at any time. This is where the beloved is to lodge. And it is once again found in the commandments that Yahushua has repeatedly summarized through the love of Yahuwah's redemptive plan. Love one another, those supporting this spiritual understanding for everlasting life. Yahushua is leading us through uh, what Yahuwah gave to Moshe, the written word containing the covenant promises. This is Yahuwah's love toward us in order to bring it to pass. We ought to follow this so that the generations remain successful in this endeavor of gaining favor by Yahuwah to receive everlasting life. We need to be lodged right there in our understanding. Of course, they are in, they are in a house of harlotry, in the house, but not of it. Steadfast and immovable from the belief. Love in every way. Love the people. Love that plan. Stick to it. Lodge yourself right there. Notice it reads, no one has seen Yahuwah at any time. This is indicating that people in this place of spiritual adultery and fornication have their own ideas about who Yahuwah is and what his name ought to be and how to get to a place of favor in order to receive the everlasting life we all profess to believe in. Since no one has seen Yahuwah at any time, people have other ideas about worship and what name is to be used to identify who that is. And Rahab's house was wide open. It could be anything they were calling on just like it is today. They think it could be Allah, God, or whoever. This is harlotry because no one has seen Yahuwah at any time. I don't care how real the dream was in those dark places. So let's let's shine some, some, uh, some moonlight on this. There's only one Elohim and his name is Yahuwah. He is known by name only. It is of the utmost importance to get that right first and foremost before you die. Before you die, when you get to this dark place and need to be saved. Secondly, better know about his plan. <laughs> because the enemy has a plan too. To deceive you and take away your salvation. And the overwhelming majority of souls follow that one. Yahuwah's plan includes the one who taught us to love one another according to his words spoken to Moshe. He loved us. That's why he had them written down. His Ben, Yahushua, is the one who armed us with this spiritual understanding, knowing we all have to go this way so that we could show people according to the word where we are supposed to be lodged, firmly fixed or embedded in a particular place, totally opposite from a world of spiritual adultery and fornication. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from B'nai Yisrael. If we love one another, Yahuwah abides in us. And it was told the king of Jericho. This is the king of another moon here. Like Islam, they follow the moon too. This is the enemy. Some other king in the dark places of Jericho. That whole region is dark. They have a name for their mighty one as well. And everyone loves to believe we are talking about the same person. He just has different names. Like demons do not have names. This is a king and his people are following after its moon, Jericho. 
king of Jericho. Demons that are sharing some light of their moon. They love what they have been led to believe. If we love one another, then we support and love what we believe. You see it in the survey line. We'll use what Yochanan says here first, if we love one another. These are the men in the upper line of Yahushua. Then it reads, Yahuwah abides in us. This is why it reads, they were from B'nai Yisrael. Men have come here tonight from B'nai Yisrael. These are children who believe Elohim prevails, which is the meaning of Yisrael. They believe he prevails over everything seen and unseen. Yahuwah abides as Elohim in Yisrael, meaning he is the mighty one of Yisrael. It was told the king of Jericho also saying, behold, behold. This is something spiritual going on that the king of Jericho has picked up on. What they have told him, no doubt word of the things that happened in Mitzrayim had traveled. So we have to stick together. Does not yet say what the king was told. Whatever it was caused him to become suspicious because they came at night. Come here tonight to this dark place from B'nai Yisrael. It's a dark place. A whore's house. Now in a whore's house, there's all kinds of spying going on. Notice someone went and told it. This is a whore's house. A lot of dark secrets here. Everyone knows what that is because everyone will be associated with a whore's house in some way. Whore houses are most notable today in all the local religious houses of worship. Every last one of them. No matter the religion or the denomination, and none bigger than those following rabbis. They follow the moon too. Sophisticated and educated spiritual whores. Yochanan says, if, if we love one another, he says this because if we don't, then we will not make it either and be classified as one of those whores, okay? One of those whores that are shining light from Yericho. Only this is not the Alapta Yericho. No mark of the accusative here on this usage of Yericho, meaning they will not be saved following this king. That is why Yahushua said in the previous lines, or in the upper lines, you see it on the screen, especially Jericho, especially the Alta Jericho. This one here does not lead to everlasting life. Not this moon. No Ibrit understanding associated with it. These must have learned out of the Greek, Alpha and the Omega, Arabic or something. Because there's no Alta here. If we love the Alta Jericho, then we love the Alta himself. Yahushua, the one who sent us. To search out the Al of Ta country. And his love has been perfected in us. So Yahuwah is with the men to search out the Al of Ta country. Place to call home. Yahuwah says, and or Yochanan says, and his love has been perfected in us. This is called being chosen. So Yahuwah is with them to give them this land everlasting playing out here in the story. He is overseeing this excursion, searching out the country. The word for perfected is G5048. It means to carry through completely, to accomplish and finish, to bring it to an end. The goal proposed to bring to a close or fulfillment by event the prophecies of Scripture. Perfected. Everything written in the Torah, especially the covenant, is literally and spiritually unfolding. 
It has and will continue to come to pass. The prophecies should be the driving force behind believing in anything unseen for salvation. This is perfection according to the definition. If the book has no prophecies in it, Islam, you should not follow it. All of scripture is prophetic from the beginning to the end. It is one continual book of prophecy. From Breshi to Chazon, it is one vision. Genesis to Revelation, if you will. Yahuwah has separated himself from all other names through prophecy concerning his promises. Perfected it. His way is the only way to salvation. Seen here as the Alephtah country. And all the signs and wonders lead to him. This is the land everlasting. Yochanan says his love has been perfected in us. He brought it to pass. Established the land during the time of Yahushua. And most importantly, established a land on the other side of death. Called the land everlasting. We just have to pass through this dark place to get there. The belief system will be established here on the earth as it is in the Shemaim. This is a dark place we are searching out in order to get to the other side, the land of promise. And this is set up for all who believe. Yahuwah just used his people to set it up so that the understanding is made clear in the Abrit for everlasting life. So it's not to give credit to some demon, you know, for salvation. Yahushua chapter 2, we'll be looking at 3 and 4 as it lines up with 1st Yochanan. Chapter 4, we'll be looking at 13 and 14. So the king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us. This is separation here in the lines. Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house. By this we know that we abide in him. The king has been told some news that has raised his concern. When you call on the name of Yahuwah Elohim, word gets around to high places because they speak as the world and the world hears them. But this raises doubt among their followers. So they take this revelation to their leaders. Yep, but we are rejected because we have knowledge of him and abide in him. Notice this, the king sent to call them out of Rahab's house. In fact, this is a setup going on. The king wants Rahab to bring them out, set them up. But down in Yochanan, they stay put. We abide in him and he in us. They knew Yahuwah was with them. And so they didn't go out. For they have come to search out all the country. Because he has given us of his Ruach. For they have come to search out all the Alephtah country. Mark of the accusative is here on the country. The word Eretz is used again. No place left in the high places for demons to dwell once this is done. Yochanan says, because he has given us of his Ruach. This is a supernatural special force that cannot be defeated to ensure success and ultimate victory to achieve the goal of everlasting life. A down payment, if you will. This is extreme confidence to get the job done.
Then the woman took the two men and hid them. And we have seen. The mark of the accusative is on the word to, shenayim. These are the same two men we spoke of earlier, who were sent to spy out the land and will come back to judge the actions of what is going on here in the face of extreme danger. Okay, we already know their symbolism. She hid them, and it does not go unnoticed, because Yochanan says, and we have seen. Okay, what Yochanan is referring to is Yahushua, the one who was also sent to spy out the heart concerning the events surrounding his death and resurrection, and will come back again to judge the world concerning it. He himself is doing the work of two men for everlasting life. Okay, Yochanan says we have seen. So she said, yes, the men came to me and testify. So she testifies, and this woman has a lot of smarts with her because she testifies without perjuring herself here. She testifies, yes, the men came to me. The king wanted her to bring them out, but that was not going to happen. So she skipped that part of what he asked and proceeded to address the next part of what he said, where it reads, who have come to you. <laughs> she did not say they were not there. She just carried the conversation another way. Yes, the men came to me. <laughs> this is a true woman of the night. Yochanan also testifies to the first coming of Yahushua HaMashiach, symbolizing one of the two times he is to appear. But I did not know where they were from. Yochanan declares that Ab has sent the Ben as savior of the world. But I did not know where they were from. The two men most likely did not reveal the location of the camp, so she would not have known of Shatim, where they were from. The camp was on the other side of the river in the wilderness. So again, she did not know where they were from. And she may have been playing with words. Either way, it worked. <laughs> Yochanan records that Ab has sent the Ben as savior of the world. No one knows where they are from either. This brings us back to the two men sent as spies. They were from Shatim, and if you remember in the earlier lines of this video, the word Shatim identifies what Yahushua HaMashiach was sent to set up in the first coming in order to spy out the land. Okay, he will be sent again to judge what he has set up. He himself is operating as both men. Wants to set it up, wants to judge it. Same person. Amen. Toda for watching with us here at Sari. If you have not already, go ahead and subscribe. Share this message with your friends, especially those who believe in Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach, for the time is near. Shabbat Shalom.